Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of, for, of sharing my research here to the organizers of this nice session. Uh, I will try to just introduce some experimental research I've been doing in the course of the last uh, six years. Um, uh, just trying to adapt the GIS technologies uh, to the particular case of the museum rooms. As I, as I wrote in my research, uh, uh, sorry, in my abstract, um, I refer to quite, well, a broad theoretical framework. I, I'm not getting that much into theory now. I want to uh, talk more about uh, met the methodology, the method itself, but yes, the thing is that I'm looking, and I started actually looking at a particular museum, which is the Prado in Madrid. And the, the Prado, uh, well, everyone who knows that museum has in mind that it's um, a museum of paintings, but there are also uh, archaeological archaeological remains in the museum. Like, for example, these muses that come from Villa Adriana in, in Rome. Um, well, just to introduce the GIS technologies for er, anyone who maybe is not used to these particular technologies, the, the potential they have for representing information and expanding information from the textual to the spatial and the visual is that they they can gather both like bitmaps, like we call it raster images uh, when working the EIS, so that that could be any particular representation of an image and vectorial vectorial representations of the same entities of, re of reality. As we will see, uh, well this method combines both. This is like a, a workflow, the, uh, the, the workflow of the, um, the um, experimental approach I've been developing, which is part of the um, PhD I finishing in Autonoma University, but it started independently. Um, well, I, I'm just trying to fast, fastly go through this workflow just to make more or less understandable to anyone uh, how the, these tools can be potentially applied to to the uh, rooms of museums so well the, the first step um, well this is part of, this is a GIS okay this is a spatial database so the any anyone um, being uh, well, having access to uh, a, a GIS software can get um, the a special representation of the, in this case, uh, any entity. We are used to uh, utilize this kind of technologies for understanding special relationships <coughs> between findings at archaeological sites. This this approach that it's quite related to post-processual understandings of material culture and uh, the biographical and active understanding of, of, yeah, of material culture, which in this case is closely related to visual culture. Um, uh, in this case, is taken the museum as a site, as an archaeological site. So what 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 was done here in this whole system, the GIS, which is is kind of a catalog, a GIS catalog. In this case is the Prado Museum that can be done for any collection. It's only represented the um, the um, permanent collection. The first step we, we need to do for doing this is to georeference the plans. In this case, the plans were just, well, placed on a, on a map of the city of Madrid. And this, this plan, this particular plan, is not a really elaborated plan of the museum. It's just a handbook, a handbook, the handbook map of the museum. So 
this can be done easily with any any kind of, of document of visual document for for just understanding what's inside and representing it in order to how we can, how, how we will see will take uh, whether a, a deeper understanding of what's going on in in the collections. The second, well, how the after the map of the museum is at its actual place on Earth. The next stop, uh, sorry, the next step that I was developing experimentally was uh, trying to place all the paintings on their actual place, which is a quite um, time-consuming, it's a time-consuming process, but it affords, once it's done, to understand um, a lot of factors on the dynamics of the collections. And well, basically what I, what I prepared from that georeferencing map, I was the, f the first step was taking the handbook of the museum and mapping all the all the paintings on the rooms they were, but not at the actual place of of the room. This affords us to understand the potential of these technologies because it's multi uh, and which is the 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 issue of multiscalarity. We the potential of these technologies we, we normally use nowadays, um, like every in, in our everyday and daily life, is that we can get close, 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 really, really close, close and close to the, to the objects and also far. At a multiple range of scales that a paper doesn't allow. So the thing is, Thanks to this technology, the first, the first um, insight to the collection was just placing the paintings into the rooms, but not actually in the places that, that were the rooms. Then after this, it was necessary, the, no, sorry, the, the paintings in, within the room. After this step, it was necessary to produce field work and obviously, the guidebooks of the museum normally they don't. They are not a, a full catalog of, of the collection. Um, so, within the fieldwork, with the um, inventory numbers, just taking taking notes on the inventory numbers, it was possible to reconstruct the whole aspect that the collection had, well, the, the whole display that the collection had actually in <coughs> in, 20, in 2012. There was uh, a time lapse of four years that this research was stopped, and that was useful to understand how um, how, use, how useful and sorry for repeating the word um, this approach can be because museums are changing all the time in the distributions they're displayed so. One of the main potentials of this method is that it allows to understand the dynamics and the, the, the curatorial changes in the discourse, in the, in the curatorial discourse, a long time. Um, it was a fini well, the, it was the, the Prado developed a quite complete online catalog, so from the just taking notes at the fieldwork on the inventory numbers, it was possible to complete the database doing laboratory laboratory work within the within the system. Uh, well, this is basically the, the process of the laboratory work, it's just uh, filling dates to a database. Uh, another potential use, well, the, the potential that this technolo technology has is that it can allow us to integrate uh, bibliographical information within the same environment we are looking at the, at the artworks 
or the artifacts within the space of the collection. So, so well, uh, here are some um, bibliographical references on a particular artwork that I was looking at for my PhD, which is the portrait of Domenicos Teotokopoli, El Greco. And well, taking every th all this all this information within the database in further developments of the method uh, through curing technologies will allow us to um, get but get um, the information ready back to us to understand. This is. I know this is may, they, maybe this can be a bit dense, um, dense um, information, but it's useful just to know how all these tools work to talk to the people who develop them. So the GIS uh, technology, uh, the, the GIS depiction of uh, visually depiction of this spatial entity, which in this case it's a particular museum, um, allows us to, sorry, I, I, I missed the point with the, with the time letter. I just go forward. Um, within this workflow, after um, taking a look to the biography of artworks that it's accessible to online and digital catalogs and also uh, printed catalogs, uh, the historic records of room display and museum database are also, of course, usable, uh, useful and uh, susceptible to be included. And, that, and this is the issue I was referring before. We can go to the archive of a museum and see how all the display were, uh, has changed a long time and represented, uh, represented within the same environment. So uh, afterwards, through methods of uh, visual and spatial analysis we, that can be with statistics or can be just querying, like if we were um, using Google, but our database is not the whole net, but just the, the environment we've created, we can find um, information which is relevant to any particular research. Um, I also refer to Walter Benjamin and the notion of aura that was inspiring to me in order to uh, develop a, a depiction of the artworks closely attached to its materiality. And I, I kind of try to represent the, the aura of the, sorry, I'm going fast now. The aura of, of any pictures by because this is attached to its real and its actual place within reality, of course, it's scaled. It's a, an accurate depiction of the museum. So we can represent the artworks or the artifacts at their, uh, at their part, particular scale, not only as a point, but as a polygon. So that affords us to understand the dynamics that are going on. If we are studying uh, an external, an external collection, the dynamics that are going on at the criteria of exhibition from curators, uh, but on this case, as it was, as it was, as, as it happened, sorry, it's possible because this was an independent exhibition that ran in Madrid just only for a, a weekend and we tried to use also experimentally this this method. It was really useful because uh, it was on novel, novel artists. And, um, and well, it was useful just to adapt to a, a space that was not conventional, like a theater, the, the dimensions on, on the artworks. And, and well, the, the main potential of this also is that it's interactive. It's not like the, the typical plan on a paper. We can move and try to understand and also 
we can interact not only with the geometrical depiction of the artworks, but also with their, their attributes. And this also affords us to expand the, um, the queries outside of the museum, so we can also geolocate the places these, these particular objects are related to and understand dynamics going on between authors or schools, uh, any kind of, of relationship, just as we can see here by querying, and also through statistics. Um, well, uh, sorry because I was a little bit messy on the line of the flow, uh, of the workflow. But yeah, basically I, I just moved from the archive pictures of rooms, a reference prior to display, to the extrapolation of the interaction area within the, the museum. I also was referring to the curational, curational decision making that also can be related to a records on preservation state, the state of preservation of the, of the artworks, not only knowledge like uh, contextual knowledge from their original context, but also uh, we can take into account how they are preserved. Um, we can take into account, for example, and model the lightning of the rooms. So maybe if there are objects that need for a slider light, we directly know where to locate them, things like that. And well, I just brought here the, um, some potential on the interaction for users, which is, the, this is like, um, this is the map of that, of that event that had, that took part, sorry, in, in Madrid. For example, there wasn't no any, um, any curator, curatorial discourse on the spaces, but we can define with these polygons you see, these are polygons, that, these are drawn, non, non bitmaps. We, we could have here uh, all the discourse on the rooms, and we can have here all the information. So we, we have a catalog in situ that expands the information in front of the, the artworks or the, the artifacts. At the same time, we are having an aesthetic with, in this case, it's particularly evident because it's a more focused towards art museum. It's more focused towards aesthetic experiences. So we can expand that, that information towards the context easily and just um, making that information directly accessible to the, to the users. So this kind of, this kind of map as uh, you see, well, this is Google Maps, so if we are at the exhibition with the, with a mobile phone and we are locating on them, there's a margin of error that maybe can locate us not at the right place, but right, uh, we can just look at the map as if it were the traditional map of a museum on paper and, um, well, uh, yeah, just go and look and get further information of artworks that or artifacts that otherwise it will be it will be difficult to to get in in situ. And yeah, well, I just was some um, critical, well, critical, and because the Prado missed. Sorry, I will finish soon. The Prado lost uh, like 885. Um, um, artworks, uh, well, yes, uh, artifacts, objects from their inventory in since 2008. So this also applying this technology not also to the uh, exhibition rooms, but also to the stores. It could be um, probably um, prevent. Well, it can. It could contribute. Sorry, to prevent this this kind of issues. And also, well, we've, as we've seen in the previous presentation, this also is useful in the case of spread collections. The Prado owns a lot of a lot of paintings that are not in the Prado, but are spread all around uh, institutions uh, all around the Spanish state. So this is also useful to understand where they are uh, from the main web page of, of the Prado Museum, but also 
at those places where the where these spread funds are the, the, the spread objects and yeah i think well also of course this is useful for transferring scientific knowledge uh, which is what i try to do here and well thank you very much for listening